Wow! The Great Barrier Reef is certainly a beautiful place. And among the most beautiful things dotted along the coast are the islands associated with the Barrier Reef. It's interesting to think about how those islands form. It all starts below the surface. Let's pretend that this is part of the reef. Now, for much of its life, the reef is submerged. But at low tide, the reef may emerge, break the surface. High tide, it's covered again. Low tide, it emerges. The reef is actually built up of a kind of stone. The stone is formed by tiny little animals called coral polyps, millions of them. They take food from the water, they build up their own bodies, and they build around their bodies a casing of limestone. And that's what forms the reef. The action is all occurring below the surface. We're sitting above Opal Reef right now. Let's go down and have a look at some of that action. Continue the story of how those islands form. Remember our little pretend island? Here it is, just at the surface. Now, the coral reef polyps only stay alive when they're being washed by water. If they're above the water all the time, they die. What happens sometimes is that bits are broken off from the outside of the reef and they pile up on top. So we'll represent those broken bits by these pebbles. Sometimes if you sail over a reef, you can see reef boulders or coral boulders sticking up out of the surface of the water. If you get lots of those occurring, then some of them may break down and form coral sand as well. So in part of the reef, you get a kind of an island forming. Now these are called K's, C-A-Y. It means the same as the word key in America and the West Indies. A small island formed on a coral reef. And to begin with, it may be no more than sand. Some of the time covered, some of the time uncovered. And there's one just over there, it's called Undyne Reef. It's about 20 kilometres away. I think we ought to go and have a look at it. Undyne Reef, 100 metres long, 50 metres wide. This is the first stage in forming a coral island, but here there's nothing but sand. And have a look at this sand. It looks like broken up pieces of coral, and that's exactly what it is. Over thousands of years, the action of the waves has broken up pieces of dead coral to form this coral sand. And the reef is only here part of the time. It's here at low tide. When high tide comes, and I think that will be in about two hours' time, the reef will vanish until tomorrow. Ah. And so the story continues on the formation of reef islands. Well, remember our little model? That's the... Uh, K, which consists of nothing but sand. Now, as the years go by, hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of years, other things happen. Birds will often visit this island of sand, and they leave their, their droppings behind. As this happens, uh, and as more coral sand appears, it's cemented together. It becomes a more substantial island. Other things may occur as well. The birds may accidentally bring with them seeds in their feathers, in their beaks. Also, seeds may be blown there by the wind. Some may float across the seas. And so you gradually get vegetation building up on the K. It becomes very beautiful at this stage. And Michaelmas K is a good example of a coral island at this stage. You know where Michaelmas K is? 40 kilometers down the track. Should we go and have a look at it? Okay. This one. K, 
the next stage in the formation of a coral island. Once again, lots of broken up pieces of dead coral, coral sand, but this time there's also vegetation, low shrubs and also grasses. And because of the plants growing here, the roots tend to bind the sand together. The whole cay has become a haven for birds. Some of them nest here and others rest here on their journeys. Not a bad idea. the things I do for you. It's crazy. Well, that was Michaelmas Cay. Very pretty little spot. But the island development continues. You see, there it is. Sand and some vegetation. Weeds, grasses, low scrubs. If the build-up process continues, the island may get higher and higher. Vegetation becomes more profuse. And eventually, even trees may grow. In fact, it's possible on a coral island to get jungles occurring. Little jungles, but they're jungles nonetheless. When that occurs, you get all sorts of interesting things happening. There'll be teeming bird life there, little animals, all kinds of animals, reptiles, insects, all sorts of things. The islands are absolutely beautiful at that stage. Green Island is one example. What's another one? Oh yes, Heron Island. And over there, I see the Low Isles. You guessed it, about 30 kilometres away. But to complete the story, I guess we better visit Low Isles. Come on, you come too. sick of all this swimming but here we are at Low Isles just off the mainland at Port Douglas in northern Queensland. You'll notice that besides the coral sand and the low shrubs and grasses there are quite big trees. Some of those are coconut palms. Who knows they may have grown from coconuts which floated across the sea from the mainland. In any event there's a lot of vegetation here. In fact it's almost like a jungle in the middle of that. And there are also man-made structures there as well. Did you notice the buildings? Can you see the lighthouse? This has become a very important landmark off the coast of northern Queensland. Now, if you ever get a chance to see Low Isle or Heron Island or Green Island, take that opportunity because they are truly beautiful, well-developed coral caves. <laughs> Thank you. 